convergence, a gathering of sons and cause to fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God by means of ceaseless prayers, ministry of the word and breaking of bread. We have converged. Lord, let your word do everything in our hearts. Please, Lord, let it fall at the fertile of our hearts. Touch us in your word in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Today we are going to pray. We are going to pray. Don't mind the rain. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. But before we pray, I want us to to look at something, something, so that when we are praying, you know, we pray with understanding. Fire, fire, we talk about fire, fire. Fire is a reaction, usually it's chemical reaction in nature that produces heat and presence of flame or smoldering. However, you know, some controlled environments, sometimes fire doesn't produce flame. But most times when fire produces flame, you find out that even the flame is hotter than the main fire. And the flame, even before you come here, is already beginning to burn you. Man has used fire to destroy those things that they think is indestructible, those things that cannot be destroyed. Those things people say that this thing there is no way out. Men have used fire to destroy them. Everything that stands on the way, the pathway of fire is always consumed. I think we have seen where fire is burning. At least we have seen it down when the Jago NNPC pipeline <coughs> went ablaze. You saw how that part was on fire. Everything along its path it catches fire. Both man, both animal, both building, vehicle, name it. Anything on the path of fire catches fire. A lot of people would not read the Old Testament and the Revelation because there is a lot of incident of fire. People cannot stand the fire that God is sending fire to consume a lot of evil. And then when they come to the book of Revelation, they are finding that fire is there, that people are being thrown into fire. There is the lake of fire that is burning with brimstone, sulfur, this, that, heavy, heavy things. And people just decide, let us not read that one. Those things are too big. Those things are scary. They are things that I would dream, I would have, negative, I would have nightmare about. So let me not read the Old Testament. Let me not read the book of Revelation. Let me just dwell on the New Testament of the <laughs> Gospels and the episodes. Let me forget about Revelation. Or they forget that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, 24, the Bible tells us that the Lord, by God, is a consuming fire. Watch it. Is a consuming fire. It is that he is not just a fire, but he's the one that consumes. He's the kind of fire that consumes. You know, you can light up a fire here and the fire is just here. You you begin, you can hold it, you can maintain it. But when God, that God fire, he says it consumes. Means it leaks up everything. Just like remember when Elijah called that fire, what happened? It leaked both the stone. That's the first time I saw that fire could leak up stone. Stone, stone. Stone, it cleared it, cleared the wood, cleared everything, cleared even water. Said the German chapter 424 that God is a consuming fire. A lot of people think God to be one person that we can always cheat, one person that is very gentle all the time, one person that is meek, one person that is very generous. One who anybody can do anything and you go back to him and say, I'm sorry. Every time we talk about God, people are looking at him like the prodigal son. You know what the prodigal son did? The prodigal son, he, 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 he squandered his father's wealth. And when he was coming back, his father was the person who saw him first and called him. So anytime we talk about God, people always look at him as somebody that you can always do anyhow with. And then you can get away with it. Everybody look at him as somebody that is always gentle, somebody that is always good, somebody that is always kind. Someone that's always merciful. However, they are not totally wrong. They are not totally right. They are not totally wrong. They are not totally right. It is good that we know God as a person who is meek, who is gentle. When we know him as somebody who is gracious, who is merciful, we know him as a father. It is a father that will look at his young one and make sure that he feeds his young one. It is a father that will look at his young one and make sure that he gives him bread. He gives him fish instead of serpents, instead of stone. 
it is a father that will make sure that his father, his son, inherits it, inherits his property. That is why he is a father. That is why he has called us. He has adopted us to be sons because he's a father. Because he's a good God, he has adopted us to be sons, to be heirs, joint heirs with Christ, that we may enjoy the inheritance, the riches of Christ. But then, that we should not take away the part that he's God, that he's a consuming fire, and he will not hesitate to burn anyone who crosses his path, who does anything that will negate his, his, his way. A lot of to realize that he's the same person in Genesis chapter 19 verse 24 who rained brimstone and fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah. He rained brimstone and fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah. In Numbers chapter 11 verse 1, the Bible says that he burned the children of Israel with fire. Exodus chapter 24 verse 7 The Bible made us understand that when the children of Israel saw the sight of the glory of God They said it was like fire Somebody will say that this is just the Old Testament It's not there in the New Testament In Matthew chapter 3 verse 12 Jesus was the one that said that there are people that are, that are persons that he called shaft That this shaft they will burn with fire Even in Matthew chapter 7 verse 19 He said there is any tree that doesn't bring up good fruit That doesn't bring forth good fruit What happened? It will be hewed down and it will be cast into fire Revelation chapter 1 verse 14 John, the beloved, the one that Jesus loved so much, the one that could rest his head upon Jesus' chest the one that anybody, if any of his disciples could not ask Jesus anything, that one will particularly ask Jesus because he was very close to Jesus he was much more like a brother to Jesus when he saw Jesus in another dimension he said this, that the way he, when he was describing the way Jesus was he said he saw fire in his flame and he saw the Jesus that he never knew he saw Jesus in a different dimension that he, he had never, he had always known him as a very quiet man. Somebody, the Bible said that he will not break, he will, he, will, he will not make noise. Everything that the people threw at him, he did not make noise. He did not argue with anybody. When they, when they, even the, the Pharisees that they saw him, they, they, when they saw him, they said, look at you. You're not even up to 50 years. You're looking very old. And who told you that you have this? Who told you you have that? And he never argued. He never did. All the things that he did, they were always looking for a way to castigate. Yet he never argued with any of them. They saw a lowly and meek Jesus who went to the cross because of you and I. But right now, John was seeing a different kind of Jesus. He was seeing Jesus as God. And he said that in his eyes, he said there were flames of fire. Elijah knew something about God. And that is why he made that remark on that deep deep. And he said, the God that answers by fire. says, let him be God. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. He knew that on that deep day, that there was no other God that answers by fire. Because he had an understanding of the Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24, that there is a God that is a consuming fire. So he knew that Baal could not answer by fire. And so he made it on that day and said, any of you, the God that answers by fire, is the one that is God. And he knew deep down in his heart that there is a God that answers by fire. Please, before we pray tonight, let me share with you the God that answers by fire. The God that answers by fire. The God that answers by fire. Can you say with me? The God that answers by fire. When fire is involved in a matter, other elements are silenced. Do you know that the fire starts here now? All this, this rain that is about to fall. We have not, it cannot do anything. It will so rich. We sit in places like uh, Australia where you have the bushfire. When that fire starts, there is nothing, no, no elements can stop it. Even the wind cannot stop it. It's like the wind will even help it to propagate. And every massive land, massive, every a very large expanse of land will be burnt. When fire is involved, every other element, the wind, water, everything is silenced because there is something that is superior that has come. Fire ends every argument. Once fire is in, involved in an argument, everything ends because fire does not negotiate. Fire does not have any rival. Anytime there is a case and fire is introduced, that case is solved because fire is much more the ultimate. And so God has chosen to answer through this means. Each time God answered by fire in the scripture, he is set to achieve a particular thing. He chose the ultimate thing. He chose the ultimate ele elements ever known to man so that he can show men certain things, certain things that he will, certain things he desires to achieve. From the time of Moses, we saw God answering by fire. 
We saw him answering by fire against Korah and his cohort. When Moses saw the burning bush, he said, let me turn, let me turn, let me see if this fire, what is in this fire? There was something that God was achieving when he was answering Moses by fire. When it was time for Korah and his cohort, what happened? Fire burned 250 people. Why? Because they had negated what God had said. For the children of Israel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, each time that God answered by fire, even on the day of Pentecost, there was something that God set in his heart to achieve. Praise God. Remember, we said that the topic is the God that answers by fire. So when God answers by fire, what are the things that he's trying to achieve? What are the things that the scriptures have laid down that this is what God wants to get? Number one is that he lightens our path. When God answers by fire, he lightens path. He lightens the way we walk. In Exodus chapter 13 verse 21, Exodus 13 verse 21, the Bible says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. I don't think you understand that scripture. Let me do this again. Exodus chapter 13 verse 21, it says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, so during the daytime, when everywhere, when the sun is up there, what happened? The Lord goes ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. But when it is the night time, there is a way that God chose to answer them. There is a way that God chose to respond to the children of Israel. And the Bible says that He led them in a pillar of cloud in the day, then by night in a pillar of fire to what? To give them light. To give them light. Whenever God responds with fire, whenever God answers by fire, He wants to give light. The Bible made us understand in Matthew 5, verse 14, that Jesus said that word, We are the light of the world. Say, Ye are the light of the world. If you are the light of the world, then there is a universal lighter. That is the one that lights the ones that are lighted. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 29, the Bible says, For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. The Lord will lighten my darkness. Jesus has said that you are the light of the world. But there is one that is the ultimate lighter. There is one that is the fire which must touch you, which must come upon you, which must answer you before you can be the light, before you can navigate through the darkness of this world. Remember that this world is a darkened place because it has been sown over to the devil. It is the devil that is the prince of the power of the air. It is the devil that is in control. So everything here is darkness. But then there needs to be a light. The Bible says that there is no light that can be lighted and be put under the bushel. It must be a, it's like a city set upon a hill. Everybody must see it. And because God is the ultimate light, the God is the one that lightens the path of, the, of, the, of you and I. You and I can be light of the world. Whenever God responds by fire, he wants to lighten the path. He wants to lighten the darkness of someone. He wants to show one that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is something much more greater than darkness that you perceive. Praise God. Hallelujah. The second thing that happens when God answers you by fire, he empowers you. He empowers you. When God answers by fire, he empowers you. Let's look at the book of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. From verse 1, it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. If you understand the story of Moses, you will find out that this man was a man who was who saw himself as a weakling. He tried to liberate his people at first by killing an Egyptian so that his people will know that their God was ready to liberate them. Remember that God had already told their ancestor, Abraham, that they were going to spend 400 years in Egypt. But by the time you look at it, 400 years has passed. 410 years, 420 years, 430 years. And Moses felt that it's time. Let's go. And so he thought 
he will be the one that will liberate his people. And he saw an Egyptian bullying his fellow Israelites. And he killed the Egyptian. And the next day, the Israelites turned it against him. And he feared that even the house of Pharaoh would find out. And he ran away. And when he ran away, he came to a place called Midian. And he saw a woman who was tending sheep. And he helped the woman to keep her sheep. The Bible now recorded that the father of the woman gave Moses his daughter. It meant that Moses did not even pay bride price. He did not have money to pay the bride price. He, he, he was not, he, there was nothing on him to make sure that said, this is what I have. This is the dowry I'm paying for this woman. The man had to give Moses, had to give Moses his daughter, said, take, become a man. Go and, bring, go and make your family. This man was a man that has considered himself weakly. This man was a man, he, he, he said he had speech impediments. That he could not talk to anybody. This man was a very shy man. But here, yeah, when he suffered, when God responded to him by fire, by means of the burning bush, Moses was no longer a normal man. He was no longer the same Moses. By the time we read that chapter to the end, we saw that Moses put his hand in his bosom. His hand became leprous. He put his hand again inside there, and the hand became normal. He threw his staff, and the staff could turn to things. And Moses realized that, wow, he was no longer the Moses who was just at the backside of the desert. It was no longer the Moses who they gave him a wife. They gave him. The Bible says the man gave him. You know when they give a man wife, they give a man wife. It means that they just wanted to help his life. But yet he was now a different person. He was not ready to carry the tax. He was empowered. What about in Acts chapter two, verse one? Acts chapter two, verse one. Acts chapter two. Verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. These were men who were afraid to go and preach. These were men who were afraid to give the testimony of Jesus. But when God answered them by fire, by the means of, by a, as a, a, the sign of the clothing tongues of fire on their head, they were no longer, or they were no longer the same men. They were no longer frightened. They were no longer the same people who were who would shut up. They were no longer the same people who could keep their mouth shut. They were no longer the same people who were hiding. Remember that Jesus told them that you witness, you will witness from Jerusalem here and all part of the world. But before this fire came, before God answered them by fire, they were hiding. So how would they have led their witnesses from Jerusalem? But something happened when God responded, when God answered them by fire, by with the clothing tongues of fire upon their head, they were empowered. The Bible says they were given a trance. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Whenever God answers a man by fire, that man is empowered. That man is empowered. I remember my I remember one of those days in the room while I was seeking God's face. And then it was it was unusual, very unusual. And I the, the whole place became so windy, so windy, and my whole body, my whole heart, everything became very hot. And I realized that it was not, there was something extraordinary, there was something that has happened here. My whole body, my whole heart, everything became very terribly hot, terribly hot, very hot. I could say, what, what, I, 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 I could not even, I could not even, I could not, at that point in time, say this is this, this is that. It was after it, I now went to give me meaning to the sensation, to the things I was having, to those feelings, to those things I was having in my, in my body. And after that, I realized that I was no longer the same. This was the same me who would have kept, who would keep quiet. I cannot even talk to somebody. I can't even tell somebody about this. I can't even, I would rather keep my mouth shut. I would rather go be at home than be in the place or even go out to the evangelism. But I realized that after that day, I was no longer the same person. I was no longer the same person. Whenever God answers us by fire, one, he wants to show our darkness light. He wants to tell us that we have light, and that is him. He wants to empower us for the miraculous. He wants us to do things beyond our imagination. Three, he reveals his glory. He reveals his glory. Ezekiel chapter 1, 3, 8, 10. 
Ezekiel was the one who saw the glory of the living God vividly. He saw it. And you know this explanation you will see it was, it was fire. Fire. He will always describe it. He will always describe it. He will mention all those all those elements that are associated with the fire. And even so, when they saw the chariots, their wheel, he saw the coals and the fire, everything that came out there, he was seeing the glory of God. Whenever God responds with fire, he wants to show us his glory. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 5 to 8, the Bible made us to understand that Daniel saw an angel of the living God who had come in the glory of God. And when he saw him, he said he was like fire. He had fire. He had fire in his heart. Daniel was a man that the whole Bible did not record of him having any particular sin. There was no record in the Bible that said Daniel lied. There was never a record in the Bible that Daniel stole. It was more like his slate in the Bible was clean. But yet, when he saw the glory of the living God, he was a man that was lifeless. Whenever God answers us by fire, he wants to reveal his glory. That was why Paul, when he saw it in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9 verse 3, when he saw the light, he saw Christ, he saw the glory of the living God, and he was never the same. The Christ appeared to him, and the Bible said that he saw a lightning, he saw a light, and he was never the same. Any man that God answers by fire, God wants to reveal his glory to him. That was why, that was why uh, uh, John, when he saw Jesus, he saw Jesus in his glorious state. He saw Jesus, that like this Jesus, whom I had known before as a mere man, look at him in his glorious state. He is so much of glory, and there is fire all around him. Just like the story I told you, I remember those days, that day, when I had that experience, everything about me was numb. My hands, everything was numb. Like there was no life in it, there was no blood in it. It was just dead. I could not even raise it, I could not even move it. Everything was, you know, when you when when you, you've seen when they have roasted the meat or how they are, that was just like that numbness. I could not even feel it. I could not even I could not even shake. When God answers by fire, He wants to reveal His glory to men. He wants to show men that He is a God of glory. Remember that the children of Israel, when they saw the glory of God in Exodus chapter twenty-four verse seven, they said, "No, no, 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 no. The sight is like fire." It's like fire. They were seeing fire. When God responds, when God answers by fire, He wants men to see His glory. He wants men to see His beauty. And before we pray, whenever God answers by fire, He comes for judgment. He comes for judgment. 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 In number 16, 35, the Bible says, and fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Fire from the Lord came out and burned 250 men that offered incense. These men, they had negated the laws of God. Any man who negates the laws of God, be rest assured that that man will see the fire of God in response to that. God is going to answer him by fire. And when God answers him by fire, God has judged his case. These 250 people were not supposed to offer incense. These men were people that had connived with Korah and his cohort, Danta and Abira. And they did that which they were not supposed to do. And they negated the law of God. And God answered that thing they did by fire. So any man who is not doing the right things of God, be rest assured that sooner or later, the fire of God is going to come in response to that you are doing. Elijah knew this, and that was why when the captain of 50s came to him, what did he do? He called down fire, because he knew that when God responds to anyone who negates his laws, he's going to judge him by fire. He didn't do it once. He didn't do it twice. Elijah called down fire. And anyone, whether you are a professing Christian, be rest assured that the day that God will send out his judgment, and if you are caught up in the web of those that are negating what he says you should not do, be rest assured that the fire of God will catch up with that family. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, the one antagonist of sin, of the saints, the devil, 
What was his final destination? It was the fire. The fire. The fire. The same type of fire that rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah. That same type of fire that had brimstone. That was where the devil, the antagonist, the one that fights the saints of God. You know, he cannot actually fight God because he's a creature. He's not creator. He didn't create anything. And that was why if you look at throughout the Bible, anytime the devil comes to do certain things, God sends his life. God only sent Angel Michael. He cannot, you know, God cannot look at him and because in one flame, God will deal with him. So there is his match. And his match will always beat him. And you saw finally there, he was put, he was judged by reason of fire. There is something that that fire will always do when devil is around. Even his cohort, everyone that will do anything that will negate what God does, the rest are sure that the fire, the fire of the living God will not cease. Quickly, I don't know what you might have done before now. I don't know how your heart condition is before God. Quickly, can you go to God and begin to confess? Because the next prayers are going to be praying here. If you are among them that could get the judgment of the Almighty, ah, it will be very bad. Please go to God right now and begin to confess everything that you know that could be a hindrance. Tonight, we came to pray. We came to pray. The Lord